Okay, well, welcome to uh, the birth of psychology um, video. And one of the things I want to make a comment about before we get started is really um, having a clear understanding as to where we come from um, has a direct connection to where we are today. And there are two different themes I want you to pay attention to, even as we talk about the birth of psychology. Because uh, psychology really had a soul in a lot of ways. I mean, it was a philosophy and, and grew out of philosophy. And there were forces within psychology that, had, that wanted to uh, really, in one way, you, if you think about it, is legitimize psychology in the eyes of the world. And, and they did that because they thought, well, what we're going to try to do is turn it into a science and that's and we'll look at that in a little bit more detail the other th the two other things I want to mention to you one is continuity and continuity is really <clears throat> uh, where psychology came from and where we are today the big questions of psychology are still present with us today for example one of the gr bigger ones is is uh, nature or nurture that that one uh, uh, question, if you will, is still with us. We're debating it at a far higher level than we used to, but it still is one of the big questions of the day. And actually, you know, when you think about what's happened in Colorado over the last month or so um, since, <clears throat> since the shootings in Aurora, was this guy born this way or was it something that he learned? There's your nature nurture. Uh, the, the last thing I want to mention is discontinuity and the way we think about human nature um, and the way uh, whoops continuity and the way that we actually look at human nature uh, and study human behavior has uh, come a long way one of the videos we'll look at at the very end of the semester in social psychology is just exactly uh, how we studied aggressive behavior and or even role behavior if you will and so uh, our ways of understanding is very um, a, a human behavior itself is very discontinuous with where we once were two of the uh, more profound um, uh, influences at the beginning of the history and birth of psychology were two people uh, the first person was a guy by the name of uh, Wilhelm Wundt, which is always a fun one to say. And the other guy, which was who was actually a student of Wundt, was uh, a guy by the name of Edward Bradford Titchener. Uh, and Titchener uh, actually took uh, Wundt's ideas uh, one step further. But Wundt's ideas really started out initially in examining the mind of humans in very much of a physical sense. So his idea was, well, if, if, uh, if physicists study atoms um, and uh, biologists study uh, cells and molecules and so forth, then surely we're able in psychology to begin to look at what he called the atoms of the mind. And this is, was his attempt to really begin to look at uh, um, the, a physical, structural aspect. And these were the two major ideas that, uh, that Wundt uh, represents. And then later, uh, where we begin to look at functionalism, uh, we, we begin to look at behaviors themselves and so forth. So, um, uh, Darwin ushered in that, but these guys were very much of the structuralists, and they wanted to discern um, the elements that went with uh, the structure of the mind. And so what Titchener actually discovered and began to do is something they referred to as introspection. Now today, um, we talk about introspection as being thoughtful. And, and what Titchener attempted to do was to uh, develop an actual experimental procedure to uh, examine inwardly uh, the idea of 
what happens in one's mind. Obviously, one of the big errors here is observer bias. When I'm looking at uh, myself, I have a particular bias when I look at what I do. And so the idea that happened and began to fall apart ultimately is the unreliable nature of, of looking at myself. And that's really what ended up discrediting a lot of the structuralists, um, namely Wundt and Titchener. What you often see in psychology is, is competing schools of thought. And so the same thing is true here. I mentioned earlier the structuralists, which we, we talked about with uh, Wundt and, and, and Titchener, structuralists. And also uh, we have the functionalists or the functionalism school. And the, the functionalists were looking at, as the name suggests, is how do things actually function? Functionalism. And one of the key people here is William James. This is this gentleman. And, and uh, his student, which you, what you'll often see in the history of psychology is there is a, uh, a beginner or founder, and then you have somebody who's a student. And Mary Calkins, uh, which is this young, ravishing woman, was uh, one of his students that began to uh, popularize his uh, way of understanding things. So uh, the, the influence for functionalists was Darwinian thought and uh, what behavior and how it um, uh, impacted the actual outcome. Um, thinking developed because it was adaptive. Uh, smelling, um, other aspects of one's functioning uh, were developed because uh, it was adaptive and that was the the assumption under uh, under um, Darwin was the adaptive power of um, uh, of developing certain skills and so forth so the functionalists and the structuralists uh, reign supreme Mary Calkins was one of the students of William James the one thing that you probably should should be thankful for is that you're not reading William James two volume edition of uh, of the of psychology uh, the last uh, thought w or the last uh, count was that uh, it was about 1500 pages uh, in two volumes uh, the, he immediately uh, released his uh, um, I forget what it was I think it was the function or the um, uh, the um, history of psychology or exploring psychology and he immediately released an abridged version which brought it down to a whopping 500 and some odd pages so um, be thankful that your your book is only as big as it is Mary Calkins uh, probably is distinguished because she went on to become uh, APA president which was a big deal at the time to have a, a woman as a president of, of a major organization in um, uh, in in the United States at least. Now uh, as we continue through um, one of the questions is is really how did psych um, psychology develop um, from the 1920s through today and some major figures kind of pop out at us. Um, psych science actually develops um, in a variety of ways and probably one of the major figures was a guy by the name of John B. Watson down below here, uh, John Watson. And he, he among others, was a, a, a major figure in studying um, what he referred to really as the science of mental life. Um, he really redefined um, uh, psychology in terms of a scientific, you know, the scientific study of observable behavior the emphasis on observable and really he was the father of behaviorism um, which we will talk about uh, later but be, be observable behavior is really the key here um, again you have a student by the name of Rosalie Rayner who uh, popularized and worked with him and she uh, what you see over in this top 
corner up here is the example of Little Albert uh, and they demonstrated uh, the uh, conditioning of behavior or in this case conditioning of fear in this little little kid um, in regards to uh, a, a uh, rabbit basically and and so they began to demonstrate really the the beginning principles of behavioral psychology or behaviorism um, and most people look at uh, his behavior uh, or him as the father of modern day behaviorism. Now we've got a couple, uh, three other figures I want to cover with you real quickly. Um, the first one is Freud. And Freud, everybody usually uh, um, connects psychology with Freud. You know, if you were to say to somebody, um, I'm, I'm going to be a psych major, um, probably the first question somebody will ask is, you know, have you learned about Freud? Freud defines um, uh, psychology for a lot of people today. The problem is, of course, is that um, Freud really emphasized the ways our unconscious thought processes and our emotional responses to childhood experiences affected us. So his emphasis primarily really was childhood and the impact it has on who we are today. Uh, a lot of people would take issue with that, of course. The, the reaction to Freud was somebody by the name of Skinner, B. F. Skinner, and that's this guy up here. And Skinner uh, reacted to the unconscious. And so he went back to some of the roots of behavior and looking at what, what reinforces behavior. Um, and, and he developed what we refer to as operant conditioning. And he was another really huge, huge figure in psychology as far as the impact on our thinking and how we do things and so forth. The other person, of course, in at least contemporary psychology is Charles Darwin, which I referred to earlier. And Charles, Charlie was one of these guys that uh, basically was expert at really... Um, documenting his information and he has had a huge impact in our looking at for example evolutionary uh, evolutionary psychology uh, I will use this term uh, here to um, uh, be a shorthand for psychology itself it's the psi of the Greek alphabet and that's oftentimes used to betray psychology but he really emphasized the idea that the nature selects certain traits, but nature, of course, is uh, is uh, impersonal. It, it's not guided by any being, and and Darwin was, uh, you know, really kind of pushed away the idea of that. That doesn't mean uh, he didn't necessarily uh, believe that a god existed, but but he put way more emphasis on on uh, nature and its impact and and so forth. The thing that that Darwin or has had the greatest impact and continues to do so with our biggest question was something that I referred to before of nature versus nurture. And that will be something that we will continue to talk about throughout the, the semester because which is it? And ultimately um, what nature endows, nurture develops. So nature endows something and and uh, whether it's intelligence whether it's uh, innate abilities whatever it does and nurture develops it and that's the key to understand is that it it um, develops the key to understand here is that if somebody says well is it nature or nurture ultimately your question your answer is it's both what nature gives us, nurture develops.